In this video, we will show you how to set up and use your VEVO of QYSEA for the first time. Unbox. Open the packing box and take out the products and accessories in turn. App Download. You can scan the QR code to download the Fifish app. Charging. When using Fifish VEVO for the first time, it is recommended to fully charge the submersible and remote control to ensure enough battery power for the following operations. Use the submersible power charger to charge the submersible. Note, please position it accurately and then connect it, otherwise it may damage the pins. When the charger LED is red, it means charging, the charger LED is green, which means that the charging of the submersible is complete. Plug the remote control charger into the charging port at the rear of the remote control. At this time, the power LED of the remote control blinks. When the power LED is blinking in red, it means that the power of the remote control is lower than 30%. When the power LED is blinking in yellow, it means that the power is 30% to 70%. When the power LED is flashing in white, it means that the power is 70% to 100%. When the power LED is always on white, it means that the remote control is fully charged. Connection. Put the safety knot on the rear wing of the submersible and lock it. Ensure it is no gap between the two rings. Then connect the ROV plug to the ROV tether port. Please note that the accurate positioning is here before connecting. Otherwise, the pins may be damaged. Tighten the bolts after connection. When the bolts are squeezed to the O-ring, it means that they have been tightened. Wrap the 3.5mm head around the bottom bracket of the remote control and tie a knot. Then insert it into the remote control. Power on and off. Please make sure that the LED light button at the remote control is kept in the off before power on. Press and hold the on, on or off button for 5 seconds to turn on the remote control and the submersible, and the power LED of the remote control will turn on clockwise. When the power LED and lock or unlock button indicates the connection successfully. When you need to turn off the remote control and the submersible, press and hold the power button for 5 seconds again. Installing the robotic arm. Caution, installation of the robotic arm requires the ROV to be powered off. Use the M2.5 hexagon wrench to remove M3 screws and keeping properly. To remove the protective cap, position the M2.5 wrench head into the designated hole and rotate to release. Insert the front hook claw bracket into the venting hole. Use the dual end wrench to tightly secure the external hexagon screws and mount the robotic arm. Securely mount the robotic arm by tightly fastening the external hexagon screws with the dual end wrench. Align the cable with the Q interface at the bottom of the ROV. Insert the nut and tighten it securely to ensure the threads of the interface are completely covered. Usage of manipulator. Ensure the ROV is turned on, then change the remote control gear to mode A. Turn the right dial to the right to open the claw. Turn the right dial to the left to close the claw. Installing the parallel gripper. Rotate the dial or press the appropriate button on the control system until the arm reaches the desired position. Place the gripper onto the robotic arm, and then insert the two M3 hexagon screws. Finger tighten the two lock nut. Use a hexagon wrench to secure the lock nuts in place, making sure they are tight enough to prevent the gripper from loosening during use, but not so tight that they strip the threads on the screws or damage the gripper or robotic arm. After turning the submersible over, repeat the above steps to install the gripper at the other end. Connecting smart devices. Check the SSID on the back of the remote control, which is the Wi-Fi connection name. Open the Wi-Fi setting interface of the smart device. Find the SSID and connect it. The factory default password is 123456-7890. After connecting the Wi-Fi, open the Fifish app, and the connected model will be displayed at the interface, and the connection status at the lower left corner of the app shows connected. Android system users can click connect when prompt the dialog. Note, don't unlock the motor lock button when the submersible is in the air. Press the unlock button on the back of the mobile device bracket to make the clamp pop up. And then put the mobile device on the bracket. Push the clamp to fix the mobile device. Firmware update. If the smart device detects an inconsistency with the firmware version of the ROV, the app will prompt to update the firmware. Tap to upgrade. Click firmware update, and the app will start to check the new firmware version. After the check is finished, click Confirm to start upgrading. Note, please do not turn off remote control and submersible. After the update is completed, click Sure and return to the app homepage. Calibration Demo 
as the different actual conditions in different places. In order to ensure accuracy of the sensor inside submersible, FIFISH officially suggests that the sensor calibration of submersible should be carried out before each dive. In the app interface, click the settings icon, enter the calibration menu, and click Euroaki calibration. Go with app prompt. Firstly, place the submersible horizontally, then click the start button. Secondly, place the submersible vertically, then click the next button. After being prompted to complete the calibration, click the finish button to complete the Euroaki calibration. Then click mag calibration, click start button. Firstly, rotate the submersible horizontally and clockwise for two rounds according to the app prompt, then click Next. Secondly, rotate the submersible vertically and counterclockwise for two rounds, and then click Finish button to complete the calibration. Pre-dive preparation. Please operate in an open area with barrier-free and high visibility. Before diving, check whether the tether's interface are dry and whether Q interface and tether port of the submersible covers correctly and securely seal. Hold the rear wing for deployment. Please put the submersible in the water with depth of more than 0.5 meter. After placing the submersible in the water, press the lock or unlock button on to unlock the thrusters. Press the depth hold button to turn on the depth holding, and the fuselage will remain at the fixed depth when moving. First dive. Take the American UAV mode as an example. When the submersible is in mode A, the left wheel controls the submersible to pitch up and down. Rotate the wheel upward to control the submersible to raise its head. Rotate the wheel downward to control the submersible to lower its head. Pushes the left stick up to control the submersible to float up. Push down. Control the submersible to dive. Push left. Control the submersible to turn left horizontally. Push right. And control the submersible to turn right horizontally. Push the right stick up to control the submersible to move forward. Push down. Controls the submersible to move backward. Push left. Controls the submersible to translate left. Push right. And controls to translate right. When the submersible is in the mode S, rotate the right wheel inward to control the submersible to roll counterclockwise. Rotate the wheel outward to control the submersible to roll clockwise. The LED button in the front right of the remote control has three gears. When it is off, the LED lights are off. When it is in the first gear, the LED lights are in the medium brightness. When it is in the second gear, the LED lights are in the maximum brightness. In the operation interface, you can see information such as the current dive depth and water temperature. In the lower right corner, you can see the current posture of the submersible and the relative position between the submersible and the operator. In the A mode, double-click the 3D model to initialize the posture. Control mode. Attitude mode is designed for beginners. The ROV will not roll in attitude mode. The ROV will stay in same depth moving when depth holding is on. Even with pitch angle, the depth will be the same. Sport mode is designed for skillful pilots. Sport mode will enable the rolling freedom, so, you will access all six degree of freedom of Viavu. Mode C is VR Somatosensory Mode. Firstly, turn on VR Somatosensory Control in the App Interface Toolbox, and then fix the device in VR Goggle. VR Glasses Installation. Note that the white line above the screen needs to be aligned with the groove above the bracket. Secondly, wear the goggle, and then adjust the remote control to Mode C. In this mode, the submersible will turn with your head and change its orientation accordingly. There are two adjusting sliders on the top VR goggle, and move the slider forward and backwards to control the distances between the lenses. Move the slider left and right until the images are properly alive. Photo and Video In the photo mode, press the photo button of the remote control to take photos. Press the recording button to switch to the recording mode. In the recording mode, press the recording button of the remote control to start or stop recording. Press the photo button to switch to the photo mode. You can also click the image and video button in the app. You can switch the shooting mode by clicking the switch button. Click the camera parameter to enter the camera settings to change the camera parameters. Retrieve. When used for the first time, it is recommended not to control the submersible to dive too far. When you need to retrieve the submersible, please operate the submersible to float to the surface. After confirming the position of the submersible, operate the submersible to return. In the process, it is recommended to retrieve the tether at the same time to avoid entanglement. Data copy. Enter the home page of FIFISH app, click media, then press device. You can view the photos and video, and click to review. Press for seconds to select the materials you want to download. Click start, and then choose them to your smart device or remote control. Please make sure that your remote control has an SD card inserted if you want to copy them to the remote control. 
After complete downloading, the interface will be automatically folded up. Maintenance For extending the service life of the submersible, Fifish officially recommends that the motor should be maintained after each dive, especially after use in seawater. Prepare a basin or bucket and fill it with fresh water. Connect the submersible, and when it is turned on, please press the depth hold button on the remote control. Note, there is no need to unlock the motor during the maintenance. Please ensure that the motor locking button is in the lock state. Completely immerse the submersible in fresh water. Please ensure that each motor is immersed in fresh water. On the home page of Fifish app, click Help and select Maintain. After entering the motor maintenance interface, click Start. At this time, the thrusters of the submersible start to run slowly for automatic cleaning. The submersible can be pressed with heavy objects to ensure the thrusters immerse in the water. The automatic maintenance will last for about 10 minutes. If you need to finish manually, click the Stop button. When the motor stops running, the maintenance is completed. The above is the first use introduction of the Fifish V Evo. Thank you for watching.